The first time Minecraft was ever released was on old forum posts and internet relay channels. Because Notch was an indie developer, many of the players who were the first to ever play the game were just normal people. There was no special beta test team, no massive company, just Notch and a post. What this also meant is that these players likely had the biggest impact on the game of any, as many of their suggestions would end up shaping what the game would become today, with some even going as far as coming up with the name Minecraft itself. I got curious as to who the first ever Minecraft players were, what they did in the game back in 2009 when it was entirely unknown, and what they thought of it now that it's become the most popular game in the world. But how can we even find such people? This did happen in obscure corners of the internet all the way back in 2009, after all. Well, the very first time Minecraft was shared by Notch was in IRCs, which were like old Discord text channels. These chats predate Minecraft's first public classic release on May the 17th, 2009, and involve versions of the game only a handful of people ever got to touch. However, the IRCs only provide a simple username of very few individuals, making it very difficult to track down anybody from there. But, Notch also made a very early post to an older forum known as TigSource Forums, which was popular amongst indie game developers and also included many of the same individuals from his early IRC discussions, amongst hundreds more. On May the 17th, 2009, Notch would post to the playtesting section of the developer forum, Minecraft Alpha. It's an alpha version, so there might be crashes. You can read some background insight on my blog. The main inspiration for this game is Infiniminer, but it's going to move in a more Dwarf Fortress way, gameplay-wise. And this right here is where it all began. The people who responded here are all the very first Minecraft players. And since the post was made in 2009, it has now been viewed over 1.2 million times. So, finding the players wasn't that hard, but actually getting into contact with them is another story. The cool thing about the TigSource forums, which makes it possible to track players down unlike old IRC logs, is upon clicking on a user, you can often find their websites, social media, or emails. The issue is though, many of these accounts haven't been touched in over 10 years. As such, the hunt began. As I spent hours going through multiple pages of responses trying to get in contact, track down, or just find anybody I could. I'm also hunting for 400k subscribers by the way, we're getting quite close, so make sure to subscribe if you haven't already. It would really help me out. No pressure of course. The first response to the thread would come only 8 minutes after Notch's post by a user named Shti. Going to their profile revealed a website link that no longer worked. But a bit of tracking down and I discovered that Shti actually now works for Mediatonic and was involved in developing Fall Guys. I unfortunately was not able to get in contact with him though. Muku was also a dead end, with an account inactive since 2011 and an old blog not updated since 2009. However, the third comment left on the thread only 15 minutes later by Incrapair had hope and I managed to make contact. Incrapair was one of the few people on Earth to play Minecraft only minutes after its public release. I asked him some questions. His initial impressions about the game were that the animations were fantastic and that it was very similar to Infiniminer, which for those of you who don't know, is an open source, block based, sandbox building and digging game which Notch used as a lot of inspiration for Minecraft. Incrapair distinguished that building was much more fun though, mentioning the game had a lot of potential, a statement which aged like the finest wine known to mankind. These are some early screenshots he would post of his tall tower he built, mentioning that he liked the ability to bridge build and that he got mild vertigo doing so. This would get the attention of Muku, who hadn't realized they could build bridges this way. Muku would later go on to suggest a slow walk key like shift that would prevent players from falling, a feature which Notch would end up adding to the game in 2010, known as sneaking. Interestingly, Incrapair, who was part of the inspiration for such an idea, enjoyed the excitement of falling off, preferring it to be even more punishing instead. When I asked him if he continued to play Minecraft, he mentioned that he continued to play it on and off throughout his first few years of development. However, he mentioned that he disliked newer additions to the game, primarily magic, which I'm assuming is in reference to potions and enchanting, as well as redstone, which will both end up making much more sense later on in the video. As we scroll down through the earliest history Minecraft has to offer, I struggled to get into contact with other users who had seemingly abandoned their accounts, blogs, websites, and emails altogether. However, Reply18 posted just under three hours after the game's release by user Bood War proved to be successful. Bood War told me that around the time Minecraft was first posted, procedural generation was becoming quite popular in smaller indie games. 
when Notch would share his, at the time, unnamed creation in an old TIG source IRC Boudoir frequented, everybody went wild for it as 3D was quite rare and the procedurally generated sandbox was exciting. Boudoir's first response in the thread was showcasing a build he had constructed. The link in his reply no longer worked, but he was able to send me his older screenshots, which were recovered from his 2009 laptop. This is the image he posted right here, a cool stone spiral staircase. Boudoir told me that first impressions of the game amongst almost all players were entirely positive, with the only thing that was disliked being the fact that there wasn't much content, such as a greater variety of blocks yet. A couple hours later, Boudoir would leave another response on the post, linking a now unavailable video. This right here is that video, where Boudoir would build an underground bunker, trapping many of the human NPC inside. Boudoir told me he put a ton of hours into the game throughout 2009 to 2013, but these days only returns to the game for brief periods at a time, often to play on a smaller server with friends, before mentioning that the core gameplay loop becomes a bit boring or repetitive. He still believes the game is excellent, however. These screenshots I've been showing you are all his, and are some of the oldest on the internet, which is quite cool. Make sure to follow Boudoir on Instagram by going to at tpetch, by the way. As we continued through the pages of history, I was met with many dead ends or inactive emails that wouldn't see responses for months and likely won't ever. However, response 56 by Riku Hiro, left a bit over a day after the original post, turned out to be the most interesting response yet, as he had claimed that he named the game. You see, I mentioned earlier that Notch posted the game and discussed it with players in IRCs before even making the original post on May the 17th. As it turns out, Rinku Hero happened to be one such player who was active in those IRCs as far back as at least May the 13th, four days before Minecraft was publicly released. As I mentioned earlier, Minecraft wasn't even Minecraft yet, but rather was referred to as Cave Game. On the 13th of May 2009, Notch was asking for people to name his game in one such IRC, of which there were supposedly about 20 people active. Some of the suggested names included Luna, Mon Squaz, Infinite Dwarf Sense, Testbed 5, Rockman, Game Cave, Minor Over Matter, I like that one, Penur Tazur, something involving the word Prospects, Cave Walker, Muff Diver, Cave Command, Cave Craft, ooh, they might be onto something here, and Cave World. Notch mentioned he liked the name Cave Craft, and a bunch of other great cave-related names would also be suggested. A user named Fartronomicon suggested Order of the Stone, which Notch also liked. Fartronomicon would then suggest Craft Miner, which Rinkuhiro would reverse into Minecraft and add Order of the Stone at the end. And this right here was the first time the game would ever be referred to as Minecraft. Interestingly, crafting was not even in the game yet, and Rinkuhiro told me that he got the idea for the word craft from another game he played at the time called Starcraft. Anyways, Notch liked it, deciding to name the game Minecraft Order of the Stone, but later dropped the Order of the Stone, deciding to just go with Minecraft instead. Rinkuhiro went on to tell me that Notch would send him 300 euros in thanks for the name suggestion, which he bought a desk with. Since he was one of the few players in existence who would have played the game before it was even released in the original TIG Source post, that's right, in its pre-classic releases before it was even named, he truly is one of the first players, and his insights into the game were very unique. He told me that his early experiences with the game primarily involved digging really deep holes and tunnels, as well as tall towers. He also played online with a few friends, building Spongebob characters that were supposedly defaced. Some things never change, I guess. Interestingly, Rinku Hiro told me that some of Minecraft's early popularity may be in part due to a Team Fortress 2 blog post shouting out the game in mid-2010. Supposedly, Valve actually wanted to buy Minecraft from Notch at one point early in its developmental phase, which I don't think is a very known factoid at all, but Notch refused. He told me that games where you create your own things and want to show them off have a higher potential for virality than other games you would just enjoy by yourself, which he believes was crucial in Minecraft's early growth. Rinku Hiro would return to play the game every so often up until 2012, mentioning he hasn't played the game in about 10 years now, as the game wasn't as suited to him, preferring strategy games and RPGs instead. Rinku Hiro was quite insightful due to his vast experiences in the indie game scene, so consider checking out his Twitter. I mentioned the game Infiniminer early on as the predecessor of Minecraft, correct? Well, I managed to get in contact with a user who we'll just refer to as K, who had some interesting insights into both. K was a player who had come from Infiniminer to Minecraft, and primarily disliked that in Infiniminer, there was a certain limit to how high you could build, amongst other issues such as a focus on a team or match-based system, rather than a sandbox. 
You see, Infinite Miner, while being very Minecraft-like at first glance, was a game where the goal was to collect and mine resources to score points for your team. But many early players found that it was more fun to just build than try to play competitively. K told me that Minecraft was trying to correct this, and the first time he played it, it allowed him to do exactly what he'd always loved doing in Infinite Miner, which was to build and be creative. However, K did dislike how Notch was stealing some of Infinite Miner's thunder, but mentioned it wouldn't end up mattering in the end, as Infinite Miner would be discontinued under a month after its first release. K followed Minecraft's development up until version 1.0.0, released in late 2011, continuing to play throughout, but lost interest in the game around then. K mentioned he has come back to play it occasionally throughout the years, also mentioning a general dislike for potions and enchantments, preferring building and exploring. This is quite interesting, as it seems to be a common sentiment amongst the oldest players, likely going back to the point Rinkyuhiro mentioned, that early players primarily liked the creative freedom and sandbox elements of the game, rather than the survival and RPG aspects that would come later on. K also mentioned that he believed the hunger system wasn't implemented well at all, and that was one of the biggest issues he had with the modern game. And once again, a lot of older players would likely echo this sentiment. K also told me a very interesting story about having designed the Minecraft Dwarf skin early on, which coincidentally ended up being used by none other than Simon or Honeydew from the YouTube channel The Yogg's Cast, who became one of the most popular Minecraft YouTubers throughout 2010 to 2012. During Minecraft's early years, that very dwarf skin, popularized by Simon, went on to become one of the most, if not the most, widely used Minecraft skin. K mentioned that it was quite weird to see the skin he made become so famous and be used everywhere. But that's that. Like I mentioned, I tried contacting dozens of other older users, but to no avail. If you happen to be one such older player, however, please contact me on Discord, Twitter, or by email. I'd love to talk to more older players to hear their own insights and stories. If you enjoyed the video, consider subscribing and help me get to 400k. Thank you all so much for watching.